Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Western Association for College Admissions Counseling Virtual College Fair. We have an awesome lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. Um, but first, I have a couple of housekeeping items to go over with you um, before we start. So one, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off, um, so our panelists can't see or hear you. Second, this is a really fun way to learn about multiple schools in a short amount of time. So we hope that you enjoy this format and we'll end up signing up for another session. So there's one whole hour after this, um, after our session tonight. Next, um, this is being recorded and it will be available within one week at strivescan.com slash WACAC. Um, we also know you're gonna have some questions. So feel free at any point to put your questions in the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Type out your question and then also note the college or university that you're directing your question to so that our panelists are able to answer that appropriately. And finally, this is a really fun six by six format, which means we have six colleges that are only going to be able to share um, six minutes worth of information. So we hope that it's just enough that you are able to then to get excited and then look forward to look, um, looking into that school a little bit more um, as you are doing your college search. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our panelists. First up, I have the opportunity of introducing to you the University of Delaware. Chuck, take it away whenever you're ready. Thanks so much, Courtney, and welcome, everyone. Appreciate you being here. My name is Chuck Lidiard, and I represent the University of Delaware. The University of Delaware is a tier one flagship state public university located in Newark, Delaware, which, as you can see, is conveniently located between four major and well-known East Coast cities. So where many of us are joining us from California or perhaps some from the West Coast, it is very easy to travel to the University of Delaware. It's a short 45 minute car ride away from Philadelphia, the closest international airport. And we're also along the SEPTA or Amtrak commuter train line. So an hour train ride as well. But you could choose Washington DC, New York City or Baltimore. And as you can see, we're really close to the Atlantic Ocean as well. So as a University of Delaware student, you do have social and academic urban options, but you're really at a traditional East Coast classic, a real residential college field. We have 33,000 residents at in Newark, Delaware. And when you add to that our 18,000 undergraduates, you get a real college town feel. But as you can see, there's a lot of green space, but you just see the buildings that really just scream that East Coast Georgian architecture, the white columns of red bricks. And you uh, have a a large amount of our uh, undergraduates that actually are not from the state of Delaware, 70% actually. So not only do first year students live on campus, a majority of them actually will live even within a half mile radius of campus as well. So uh, the green, what we call it, is that large green space that you see from the top to the bottom of your screen here. And that's really the hub and center of campus life. Uh, you see your professors in between classes, you will be out on the green on nice fall or spring days, uh, having small classes, throwing frisbees, and, you know, it, it's really great. Uh, all the uh, buildings that you see all around the perimeter are your laboratories, your libraries, your dining halls, your dormitories. So one thing I think that this distinguishes our campus from other East Coast colleges is the fact that two blocks from the center of campus, that Memorial Hall building here that you see in the center of that green, you have a really thriving Main Street. I equate that to uh, really honestly, if you're in Southern California, well, uh, excuse me, Orange, uh, right by Chapman University, and then also Old Town Pasadena, and in Northern California, Walnut Creek up in the East Bay. It really is the hub and center of off-campus life. But when I say off-campus, it's a 10 minute walk from the center of campus. So you're gonna to wanna to go off campus at least once or twice a week, wherever you decide to go to school, but just know at the University of Delaware, not only do we have great on-campus amenities, especially for dining and entertainment, we have over 80 restaurants, boutiques, and shops that are on Main Street that are just really accessible, short bike wide, skateboard right away. You can have a car if you need it, but I don't really feel it's necessary. On the academic side, just what you would expect at any major flagship university, we have a lot of different majors and minors to choose from. You can be directly admitted into any of our 150 plus majors. Most of our students are gonna find it very easy to add one, if not two different minors or even double major and graduate in four years. 
In fact, ever since I've been at Delaware, this is seven years now, we've had a very high four-year graduation rate. It's really remained at 73% in four years. But we're a unique blend of the humanities and sciences. Most students on the West Coast and families know us for our uh, engineering programs, specifically biomedical, chemical, mechanical engineering. Our nursing program is our most competitive major. And we are also the number one physical therapy program in the nation. But like I said, we're a liberal arts uh, uh, college at its core. We have amazing programs in neuroscience, psychology, education. We're one of four programs that has art conservation as an undergraduate and graduate program as well. So as you can see, there's a lot to offer at the University of Delaware. And I really feel unless you're interested in engineering or the health sciences, you could actually come in as a university studied student meaning you may have multiple interests and you wanna come in and maybe decide later on. Uh, but I do feel that health sciences and engineering are slightly more competitive. One thing I will note before going on is when you're looking at public universities, I think it's important to consider the size of the graduate population. I mentioned that we have 18,000 undergraduates in the University of Delaware and we have just under 6,000 graduate students. So we're still on the lower end of a larger school. So keep that in mind that 75% of our total students are undergraduates and a lot of our research, our advising and mentoring opportunities are reserved and are student focused for undergraduates. I'm not gonna go into full too many details I can in the Q&A here, but we take 600 first year students who apply to the Honors College program. It's really an enriched academic experience with extra uh, community and advising experiences for students who maybe want the feeling of a very smaller school, but maybe look at our school as some having some great advantages, whether it be Division One athletics, Greek life, whatever it may be. Just to let you know, we do take 600 first year students across all of our eight different colleges, including university studies, which again is classified as undecided. Uh, there is one additional essay prompt that you would have to do for the Honors College, but it's a great experience. And Believe it or not, University of Delaware was the very first school to do a formal travel abroad program in 1923, actually. So we've been doing it for almost 100 years. And the World Scholars is just one way to travel abroad. It's really for those students who really want uh, global citizenship to be a part of their four-year experience. And you actually would start traveling abroad your very first semester. So if you want more information on that, let me know. The last thing I'll let leave before I pass it on to my colleagues is the Diamond Challenge. We just finished the ninth year of the Diamond Challenge at the University of Delaware. It is the number one ranked high school youth entrepreneurship competition in the United States. But last year we engaged over 5,500 high school students from 32 US states and 55 countries around the globe. It's free. You don't have to go to the University of Delaware or even apply to do it. You just need a team of two to four students who have an interest in bettering the world through either a business concept or a social venture concept. Feel free to take a screenshot, but just like my colleagues, I'll be in the chat afterwards here. I'm based in Long Beach, California, so I'm on your time zone. I'd be happy to follow up and have a conversation later on, but I'm gonna now turn it over to one of my colleagues, I believe University of New Hampshire. Chuck, thank you so much to you and the University of Delaware. Um, thanks for sharing that great information tonight. Audience, again, don't forget to put those questions in the chat um, and note the college or institution that you're directing your questions to. Next up, I have the opportunity to introduce to you the University of New Hampshire. Take it away whenever you're ready. Hi, everyone. This is Ian Quash, and I am your admission counselor from the University of New Hampshire. So UNH is a flagship public university in the state of New Hampshire. And for tonight, I would like to highlight for you the three reasons why many uh, of our students choose UNH. Um, so those three reasons are our academics, our community, as well as student outcome. Um, so I'll start by talking a little about our academics. So UNH actually offer over a hundred different majors for you to choose from. And one of the things that I think truly distinguish UNH and its learning experience is our focus on research. Um, as you can see, regardless of the student major, um, you are encouraged and I think more importantly, have the opportunity um, to do research during your four years with UNH. Um, and at the University of New Hampshire, you do so at a top tier uh, public research university. We are one of just 20 land, sea, and space grant institution um, in the country and one of only three public tier one research um, in New England. 
So here are the five colleges within the University of New Hampshire. All the program at UNH are actually direct entry, including nursing, all of our engineering program, the computer science, um, sciences, as well as business. Um, we also have unique programs such as equine studies and some of the more popular programs that attract a lot of our West Coast uh, folk coming to New Hampshire um, is marine biology, as well as a lot of ocean related majors such as um, ocean engineering and oceanography. All of our programs are test optional and none of them are impacted. We also have over 50 different research center and institute on and around our campus. I would like to highlight some for you tonight. Um, so this is actually an image of our interoperability lab or the IOL at UNH, uh, which is one of the world leading testing facilities for data and networking products. It's employed many of our current undergraduate students, especially those in computer science, as well as engineering. This is also where the first Apple iPhone was tested by our very own UNH student before being released to the market. Our research also goes beyond the STEM field. There are many amazing facilities on and around our campus that is available to liberal arts students, such as our Center for Research on Child Development, uh, which many of our you know, social work as well as psychology major uh, participate in. The second aspect that I would like to highlight for you tonight is our community. We have around 13,000 undergraduate students and 15,000 overall, making us a missite institution, meaning that we are big enough to offer you the diverse experiences and the opportunity, the resources, but still have a very tight knit and personal and supportive community uh, with a lot of school spirit. Our students also embrace all the opportunity that our location offer, as well as our residential campus and our size. Um, so our students are guaranteed housing for all four years and the vast majority, 96% to be exact, live on our Durham campus, which has a very classic New England college feel with 27 different resident hall and three award winning, uh, winning dining halls throughout campus for you to choose from. Um, our students also keep very busy on and off campus on the weekend as well as during the week. There's always something to do. So whether it's, you know, going to a Division One athletic event um, or participating in one of our 250 different student uh, club and organization or simply exploring the area around campus. Our location is actually a huge draw for students, um, especially those from the West Coast, as it's offer a lot of different opportunity. So if you're interested in grabbing a coffee in Durham, going for a walk on the beach, as well only 20 minutes away from the Atlantic Ocean, um, go skiing in the majestic White Mountain, or heading to Boston, which is only an hour away for an internship, to go shopping, or to you know go to a Red Sox or Celtic game with friends. Um, finally, Regarding our location, um, our Durham campus is very easy to get to. There are direct flight daily from pretty much all of the major airport um, on the West Coast to Boston. And since we are only an hour north of Boston, there's very easy access to and from Logan Airport, um, either by bus or by the Amtrak train, which stop right on our campus. Um, the third aspect that I would like to highlight for you is our student outcomes. So you can see that overall, the vast majority of our graduates reported that they were either employed or in graduate school um, after UNH. And if they are working, they, the majority report that their job is directly related to the major uh, their major or the area of study at UNH. Um, I think these results really speak truly to the value of the UNH education. Uh, lastly, I would like to highlight uh, some of the um, application requirement and the process. We do have several application deadlines, but they are the same every year. Um, so very easy for you to remember. We also have been test optional for the last two years. And I, um, last but not least, um, we do provide quite a bit of financial support for our incoming students, including um, those from the West Coast uh, State and California um, in the form of either need-based aid or merit scholarship. 
this is my information. I'm also based on the West Coast, so same time zone as you. Please don't hesitate to reach out. So we would love to hear from you and share more about the University of New Hampshire. And I would uh, pop the my contact information into the chat box after this as well. And thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much to you and the University of New Hampshire. Next up, I am excited to introduce to you Ryder University. Marianne, take it away whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you very much and welcome to all of you who are here tonight, both students and parents. I probably am speaking for my colleagues. This is a different way of life for us in admissions this year. And we would much rather be greeting you face to face and hopefully we will be in the future. Uh, my name is Mary Ann Kohler, and as well as being a Rider alumnus, I am also um, a Rider graduate. So uh, let's see. I wanna tell you a little bit about who we are. We are the Bronx and that is our mascot. Uh, we are division one in sports. We are a private medium-sized university. So as you can see, from my other two colleagues who are public universities, our private is considerably smaller. However, uh, one of the things that you need to consider uh, in a private school is you do get a lot of personalized attention. Uh, our faculty, 94% uh, have their PhD or doctorate. We do not use graduate or teaching assistants in the classroom. The class size is about 21 and 10 to 1 student faculty ratio. So you're definitely going to be recognized by name. The other nice thing about Ryder is that we are located in the Garden State, which is New Jersey, and we have an awesome location for any of you. Uh, students will not be wed to their cars. We have very, very affordable uh, and efficient public transportation. So riders located in a town called Lawrenceville, if you can see on the map there, uh, and we are 10 minutes from Princeton University, uh, a great Ivy League town. Uh, we are about uh, 40 minutes from Philadelphia, great international airport. Uh, we are about uh, an hour from New York City, either by car or train, which is definitely the one that uh, is a little quicker to get to, to do these days. We are also uh, 50 miles from the Jersey Shore. And hopefully it's not the Jersey Shore that people associate with Snooky. Uh, we go down the shore and instead of going to the beach like most of you do in California. Uh, affordable transportation, you can fly uh, out of any of the major airports uh, to Newark Liberty. Um, and if you do it in enough time, you definitely can get a very, very affordable price. And I'm having a little trouble with this now. Okay. All right. There we go. Uh, we have over 70 different programs of study. One of some of our most popular programs with students on the West Coast are our business majors, uh, accounting and finance, of course, being an hour from New York City and Wall Street, sports management. Uh, we work with our 20 division one uh, teams. Also, we have a great fine and performing arts program. Uh, where many of the students who do come from the best coast, as I call it, are majors in our musical theater program. Uh, in liberal arts and science, we have a great communication major. They actually will do a senior study uh, in Burbank and work in a lot of the studios there. Okay, how do I become a Bronx? We're a member of the Common Application. We do have an early action, the non-binding of the two, not early decision. We do offer uh, 10 full tuition scholarships. That's a competition. And November 15th, if you're applying musical theater, that is the early deadline date. Um, all of these dates are, are all up on our website. And May 1st is the reply deadline for all of our students who are enrolling uh, and hopefully have had a chance to make their decisions by then. 
One of the nice things about Rider is we are test optional, uh, like a lot of our colleagues these days. However, that does put a lot more ownership on all of you with your high school transcript. So if there's sophomores and juniors out there, one of the things we encourage you to do is to continue to take some competitive honors and AP classes so you can show some rigor in your um, academic transcript. We also like to tell students that we are reading their essay to write a quality essay. And we also are reading their letters of recommendation. So all of those things, like I said before, with test optional, put a little bit more ownership on you. Um, one of the nice things that our president, Gregory Delamo, did this year was he actually decided to do a 22% reduction in our tuition due to the circumstances that with the pandemic. So our tuition for 21, 22 uh, will, will be 35,000. Uh, there are a lot of things that we have in place. We have a great career development center, a new center for diversity and inclusion, and a student navigation office, somebody that will get you through all four years. You can take a look at our scholarships. Scholarships are automatic and guaranteed for all four years. You can find this on the website. I am your contact, and I'm going to leave you up there with my bronc. And I will also put my information up in the chat. So thank you very much. Good luck to all of you. Marianne, thanks so much to you and Brighter University. Wow, we've already heard from three great schools, but we still have three to go. Next up, you'll have the opportunity to hear from Rutgers University in New Brunswick. Susan, take it away whenever you're ready. All righty. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. Get scrolling on my presentation here. You think I'd know this by heart by now, wouldn't you? Consuming our lives away for this whole year, and it's really nice to be with you all tonight. I look forward to being able to do this in person maybe next year. So I'm Sue Chapman. I'm a regional recruiter with Rutgers, New Brunswick. My territory is Northern California, and I live and work in San Francisco. So Rutgers is a large public research university located on the East Coast. We're primarily known for anything in the health sciences, business, or engineering, although we do have over 100 majors. We play in the Big Ten Athletic Conference, and we are the most diverse university in that conference. So location is a very important part of the Rutgers identity. And you can see from the little mini map here on the left, we're about 45 minutes from New York City and 90 minutes from Philadelphia by train. That train station does go, is right on our campus. The train goes right through our campus. There are direct flights to the Newark airport, which is the closest airport to us from seven different major California airports. And I would describe our campus footprint as a large physical campus with five smaller neighborhoods. Each of these campus neighborhoods, if you will, has academic buildings, residence life, et cetera. And when you are living and being educated in one of these neighborhoods, in a way it can feel like you're attending a much smaller university. So Rutgers admits by school, we encourage our seniors to apply to up to three of our seven schools that accept freshmen. The School of Arts and Sciences is our largest school with about 70% of the students and not surprisingly about 70% of the majors as well. Our professional schools are pharmacy, engineering, business and nursing. And again, when I was speaking of applying by school, we also admit that way. So the admissions profile for any of our professional schools is going to be a notch above uh, for say the School of Arts and Sciences. Our most selective academic school is our Ernest Mario School of Pharmacy that offers a six year pharmacy doctorate program accepting students directly out of high school. And we also have a School of Visual Performing Arts, the Mason Gross School of the Arts, offering Bachelor of Fine Arts programs to those students out there who are aspiring to be professional dancers, actors, musicians, and visual artists. So a little bit about the learning experience at Rutgers. We do have over 100 majors. 
Our student faculty ratio is 16 to one, and that plays out in one very important way, and that is the culture of our faculty. Our, our faculty ratio is what it is because we want our professors to be available and intentionally reaching out to our youngest students, namely our undergraduates, to get involved in research opportunities. We do have over 175 different research centers on campus and a very large study abroad program, offering programs in roughly 50 different countries. Life as a student is a busy experience. There are 36,000 Rutgers undergraduates. 90% of them decide after their freshman year that they're going to re-up and return to Rutgers as sophomores. As I mentioned before in talking about our membership in the Big Ten, we are one of the most diverse universities, not just in that conference, but in the United States. And if you look at the geographic makeup of the Rutgers population, about 20% of our students are either international or come from out of state. For example, yourselves coming from say California or be it Michigan, uh, Louisiana, you name it. About 20% about of our students come from outside New Jersey. We do have 24 NCAA division one sports 750 student organizations and active Greek life with about 80 fraternities and sororities. About 12% of our students join a fraternity or sorority. So it's not a huge social phenomenon at Rutgers in terms of the culture, but it's certainly available to those students who are interested. And a little bit about how to apply a few mechanical things to think about for the fall for, for those of you who are juniors right now. We will be test optional for fall 2022 admission. We will have students apply by December 1st, please, in order to automatically be considered for a merit scholarship and or an honors college or honors program opportunity. And in closing, I'm Sue Chapman. I'm the Northern California rep. Should any of you, any of you be from Southern California, you're of course welcome to reach out to me at this email address here, but my colleague in Southern California is Maureen, Maria Sendon, and here's her email address as well. Feel free to take a quick screenshot. And with that, I will turn it over to the next speaker. Thank you. Thanks so much, Susan, to you and Rutgers University. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Ohio Wesleyan University. Courtney, take it away whenever you're ready. Hello everyone, my name is Courtney Dunn and I am an Assistant Director of Admission here at Ohio Wesleyan University. Um, we are a small liberal arts school located just outside of Columbus, Ohio um, in a small town called Delaware. Um, but I always like to tell students that you can fly out of any of the major airports in California um, to get to Columbus and we're just a 20 minute drive north. So very accessible to and from the airport. Um, an overview of who we are as Ohio Wesleyan. Um, we have 1,400 students on campus at any given time that come from 44 different states. Um, the next most presented state after Ohio is actually California. So we do have lots of students who are coming from the West Coast. 27% um, of our students identify as either multicultural or international students. 95% of our recent graduates are either employed or in grad school within six months of their graduation. Um, and 29% of our students will personalize their degree program. So what we're really known for is for students building their own path and what that will look like, whether that's two different majors, two majors and one minor, um, but also completing that within four years. Approxim we have approximately 37% um, of our students are student athletes competing in one of our one or two or even three of our varsity sports on campus. Um, we're a D3 institution um, and students will volunteer for more than 45,000 hours of service every year, volunteering at some of our local elementary schools, free stores, soup kitchens um, that are just off campus to support our local community. Um, our average class size is 15, um, and we have a 10 to 1 student-faculty ratio, so we really do focus on that small class size, um, but the most significant statistic is 91% of our recent grads have had an OWU connection experience. I should also say that we call ourselves OWU o for OWU. Um, what is the OWU connection? So the OWU Connection is our signature program here at Ohio Wesleyan, and this is how we categorize all of our out-of-the-classroom learning. Um, so we do that in three categories, think big, go global, 
and get real. So thinking big is how we categorize all of our research opportunities, whether students are doing research in the humanities or in the natural sciences, it all counts and there's research for everyone. Um, going global is how we categorize our students who are going abroad, whether that's for a full semester abroad or for what we call travel learning, um, where you can just go for two weeks in May instead of committing to the whole semester abroad. Or get real. Um, and that's how we categorize students who are doing internships or externships. So internships are your traditional 10 weeks um, over the summer or during the academic year. Um, or externships are more like a week-long shadow experience, just kind of getting your feet wet and testing things out to see if that's the field of study you want to be in. Um, so Eva is a really great example of one of those students who has done really great things um, with the OU Connection. It's not just one experience, it's two travel learning courses, one to the Galapagos Islands, one to Costa Rica, um, doing what we call a theory to practice grant, where she had the chance to write a grant to the university saying what she wanted to do, how much money she needed to go and do it. Um, the university was able to grant her both of her grants, one for her major in um, zoology to study endangered frogs in Panama, and one for her um, minor in fine arts um, to study cast iron practices in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, and then a lot of internships along the way, all leading to her job when she graduates, because it's not just about getting the degree, but it's about the experiences that you gain throughout your four years as well. So we're building the resume, gaining the experience while also getting the degree. Like I said, we're located in a small town called Delaware, just outside of the 14th largest city in the US, um, which is Columbus and lots of things to do. And a lot of our students are doing internships as well as um, taking advantage of the social life in Columbus. But I will say everything students could possibly need in terms of food, um, and social lives and things like that, you can find in our small town of Delaware. So what are our five most popular majors at Ohio Wesleyan? Zoology is number one. Business, politics and government, health and human kinetics, and psychology are our top five, but we have over 70 different majors for students to choose from. And like I said, 29% of our students are choosing two of them. Um, some of our students will do one major with uh, multiple minors. Um, it just really depends on what they want to do. And we don't make you sacrifice one passion for another. So maybe you're a, a wonderful musician, but you also want to study in the natural sciences. Um, you can double major in environmental science and music. Um, so there's a lot of different combinations that students can do within their four years at Ohio Wesleyan. Um, so we also have a lot of construction going on on campus as well. So we have a brand new first year residence hall going up on campus. So it'll have all you can eat dining, 24 hour dining, a full fitness facility to run off all that all you can eat dining. Um, and then it'll have doubles for all of our um, first year students to have a nice space for them um, to socialize during their first year. We also have a brand new apartment complex going up for our seniors as well. Um, and they will have a nice space to have more independent style living. And our volleyball team and our basketball team also just got a lovely renovation to their gym as well. Um, and lastly, the cost of tuition. I will say, I know that um, ticket price looks very expensive, but most of the average student is receiving around $43,000 in financial aid. Um, so a lot of our 99% of them receive scholarships or need-based financial aid. Um, and we really do bring that overall cost of tuition down for our Branch Ricky Opportunity Promise, um, which varies for the criteria from year to year, but it is overall $30,000 guaranteed to any student who applies. Um, this past year, it was a 3.6 GPA. It may go up slightly, it may go down slightly this coming year, uh, but we do want to offer um, significant scholarship for the work that you have already done um, in your high school classrooms. Um, we are test optional. Um, so that's just something to consider as well as you're applying. So you don't have to submit any test scores through our application process. That is everything that I have for you tonight about Ohio Wesleyan. I really appreciate you all joining us tonight and I will pass it off to my colleagues. Thank you so much, Courtney, to you and Ohio Wesleyan. Our final presentation tonight will be from the University of Toledo. Justin, take it away whenever you're ready. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us uh, this evening. My name is Justin Z. 
I am one of the regional enrollment managers with the Office of Undergraduate Admission at the University of Toledo. Uh, so the University of Toledo is a mid-sized public research university in the state of Ohio. Uh, we are located in the northwest corner of the state. Uh, so we are about 45 minutes southwest of Detroit, Michigan, about an hour and a half east of Cleveland, or excuse me, west of Cleveland, Ohio, and then about four hours east of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, so right there in that northwest corner of the state. Um, we have about 20,000 students currently enrolled at the University of Toledo. 16,000 of them are our undergraduate students. So a large majority of them are our bachelor's degree uh, students um, with a number of students pursuing graduate um, and professional degrees at the university as well. 83% uh, of our students come from somewhere other than Toledo. So we do have a great representation of students from um, across the state of Ohio, around the country and around the globe. Um, students actually come from 42 states and 84 countries. So I think there's a great diversity on campus in terms of getting to meet students of different backgrounds, different majors, different regional uh, experience. And it really makes for a great campus community. Um, that's really kind of that Goldilocks size. So it's really not too big, not too small. Uh, it's just big enough that you see new faces each and every day that you're on campus, but it's also small enough that you see the familiar faces as well. And you're never really one to be lost in the crowd at the university. Um, in terms of majors that we offer, we are a pretty comprehensive university. We have over 120 undergraduate programs. Um, and once you add in graduate and professional programs, it's actually over 270 different programs at the university. Looking at what you might be pursuing your bachelor's degree in, lots of different way, areas that you can choose from. Uh, the STEM fields are some of the most popular majors at the university. Uh, our College of Engineering is actually one of the largest ones at the university. But a number of programs then in that, natural sciences, mathematics, arts, humanities, education, business, uh, so there are awesome opportunities if you are looking to double major, uh, if you're looking to find a minor to complement your major, or if you just want some time to explore, that's great as well. And we can really meet students where they are and help them create um, the best experience of what they're looking for in the classroom. If you've got your sights set on uh, graduate programs or professional programs, I do want to highlight a few of those here. Um, the University of Toledo does have colleges of law, medicine, pharmacy, and nursing on campus. Uh, we do offer a Back to MD program, which is a preferred pathway program for students interested in the College of Medicine. Uh, we have a three plus four program with the College of uh, Dentistry at Case Western Reserve University. So if anyone's thinking about dental school, that could be a great opportunity for you as well. Um, but very strong support for students that are looking for these professional experiences, getting those research experiences and getting your questions answered about what those processes might look like. Outside of the classroom, many great ways for you to get involved on campus from our 400 plus clubs and organizations. Uh, so lots of great things for you to choose from and to really create those communities that make sense for you uh, with those like-minded students on campus. If you go through the entire list of 400 and you can't quite find one that makes sense for you, uh, feel free to start your own club or organization. That number continues to grow year after year. Um, philanthropy is a big um, effort at the University of Toledo, so I think you'll find many clubs and organizations that are dedicated uh, to giving back to the campus community as well as the greater Toledo, Ohio area as well. I do wanna talk about our application process. Um, so as you're mapping out what the application process could look like, uh, we did make some changes this year that will stay in effect indefinitely. Uh, so one of those is gonna be the test optional application. Um, we were really proud to see um, how many students took advantage of that opportunity and look forward to offering that for fall 2022 and beyond. Uh, Likewise, if you are someone that is going to take the ACT or SAT and you want to take it multiple times, uh, you can super score your ACT or SAT. Just send all of those scores to us for that. Um, and we are also doing a holistic review of um, the file for admission. So at any point, if you have questions about your application for admission, um, you know, ways that things that you might want to include, uh, questions about the essay, we are certainly happy to answer any questions that you have about the application. We really want you to feel as comfortable and confident going through this process as possible. 
Uh, to talk about merit scholarships at the university, we do offer merit scholarships for our um, undergraduate and transfer student populations. And we do award them to students who apply with test scores, as well as those who apply test optional. Uh, there is a great scholarship calculator on our financial aid website. So if you'd like to see what you may qualify for, um, always recommend just taking a look at that. Um, our scholarships are pretty generous. I would say for our out-of-state students, total cost of attendance is right around $32,000 a year. Um, and then our merit scholarships for out-of-state students range from $9,500 a year all the way up to $14,500 a year. Um, but we do offer a lot of great scholarship opportunities at the University of Toledo. We really want this to be as accessible and as affordable as possible. So again, at any point, if you have questions about what scholarships may look like at the university or how to find those, always feel free to reach out to our staff and we are certainly um, happy to help in that process. If you are looking to connect with us, we're very active on our social media channels. So we have those on the right side of the screen, um, as well as our email, um, office phone and texting capabilities as well. So thank you all so much for your time and we look forward to connecting with you soon. Justin, thanks so much to you and the University of Toledo. Now I'd like to invite all of our presenters to turn back on their cameras and we'll go round robin in the order that you presented originally. If you could please share your favorite event or tradition on campus, or if you'd rather um, just give a fun fact, that's fine too. We'll start with the University of Delaware first. Okay, um, fun fact, University of Delaware, I always try to give a different one each time. Our mascot is the Fighting Blue Hen. And this goes back to the Revolutionary War where the Delaware uh, Infantry uh, Army when they were in downtime, they would actually fight blue hens, which are really fierce fighting chickens. And it is a breed of chicken that is known for the area around uh, Newark, Delaware. And we actually do raise live blue hens on the College of Agricultural Natural Resources, which is on the south end of our campus. So you can see them by visiting the farm and also at football games. Thanks, Chuck. Yes, I think you're up next. All right. So for the University of Hampshire, um, I don't know if you guys know, but we love our hockey. Hockey is a religion for us. So, um, you know, at, at every season, the first score, that, like the first goal that you and I score, um, one of our kind of top fan, you know, get selected. This whole selection process has happened. Um, this top fan gets to throw the fish um, over uh, the side onto the opposing team um, goal. So that's marking the first goal of the season. And that's how we show who turf they're on. So go Wildcats. <laughs> I love it. And Ryder University up next. Yes, and we got our name Ryder University from our founder, Andrew Jackson Ryder. And he was a cranberry farmer in South Jersey. And he actually was the first to bring the cranberry to Queen Victoria's court in England. And he, she dubbed him the name the Cranberry King. So we have a cranberry festival every year in his honor. Thank you. Love it. Rutgers, you're up next. So for Rutgers, I'll just share a fun fact. Uh, we're always, you know, talking about our history and talking about how, how sciencey we are. So Cheese Whiz was invented by food science majors at Rutgers in the 1950s. And its original color was a very impulsive clear. Ew. Second one. I'm going to sneak this one in. Uh, Rutgers microbiology majors three years ago disproved the five second rule. So no matter, right, you drop that food on any surface, don't eat it, doesn't matter how long, it's contaminated, just no, proven science. You're welcome. Love it, Susan, thank you so much. And Courtney from Ohio Wesleyan. Um, I would say my favorite tradition on campus is our what we call Camp Awu. Um, when our students first arrive to campus, they come and they have a very lovely move-in day. And then the next day, everyone gets on buses for three days um, and they all go camping in whatever capacity that may be. Um, some students go camping, camping in tents and hike and rock climb and it's wonderful. For our students who are not so outdoorsy, they can do our challenge camp where they go do high ropes courses and zip lining 
um, and team building activities, which is really wonderful with indoor plumbing and air conditioning. Um, and then our third option is students who go do service camp and they go and they stay in local nonprofit organizations that work with soup kitchens and free stores. And it's a really great chance for our community to come together um, as first year students and really acclimate and connect to people um, right when they arrive to campus in a way that has nothing to do with academics, but we just go have fun for a few days when you first arrive, then we'll do the academics. And finally, the University of Toledo. Sure, um, I'll go with a fun fact. Um, so one of our alumni is Dr. Uh, Frederick Bauer. Um, did not know who he was before today, but was happy to learn uh, that he actually filed the patent for um, the Pringles can. So the tubular Pringles can to fit the stackable chips. Uh, he is a University of Toledo alum. So very proud of him and very thankful for his contributions to the Pringles industry. Yeah, nobody wants cracked chips, right? <laughs> Uh, everyone, I hope that you'll take a great look at these awesome professionals on your screen and know that you can reach out to them if you have any questions throughout this process. Uh, we hope that you also will have a little bit of fun through the college search process. It can be really be an amazing time in your life. There is definitely a college or university out there for everyone. With that, I'd like to say thanks for joining us. Um, as you close out, there'll be a quick four question survey and we hope that you provide us a little bit of feedback. There's still one whole hour of these left. So if you are, are enjoyed this session, um, and I know that you did, please sign up for more sessions. Um, you can sign up and the recording will be available at strivescan.com slash W-A-C-A-C. With that, best wishes in your college search, have fun, and we'll see you soon guys. Bye-bye.